Hello, I'm Tom Bailey, and in today's episode, I'll be getting to know Rennie Gabriel, who is an entrepreneur and the author of the award-winning best-selling book called Wealth on Any Income, which amazingly has now been translated into eight different languages. So, Rennie, hello, and a very warm welcome to today's episode. Oh, thank you, Tom. My pleasure to be here. Amazing. And um, for those podcast guests who can't see Rennie, he's in a very colourful floral shirt right now. So, whereabouts in the world are you right now? Uh, I'm in almost uh, sunny Los Angeles, California. Amazing. I thought so, given the uh, bright colours that, that you're wearing. It definitely must be nice and warm where you are. And um, so I wanted to just share a little bit more about you before we do get started. So after two divorces and a business failure, Rennie went from broke at age 50 to a multimillionaire after learning the three secrets of the wealthy. He now, he now donates 100% of the profits from his online programs to a charity that trains rescue dogs for wounded soldiers. Amazing. The title for today's episode is How the Wealthy Get Rich, and Ren is going to show us how in just seven minutes. So question number one today is, who are your ideal clients or the target audience you typically work with? Uh, primarily, they are people who have the ability to control their income. So it could be coaches, authors, corporate trainers, entrepreneurs, business people, uh, as opposed to employees. Yeah. Yeah. I love that way of defining them. People who can control their own income. That's such a great way of looking at it. And the next question for me is when you when you work with these types of entrepreneurs or business owners, what's typically the biggest challenge that they face? Um, the sad part is they're lacking the fundamentals of how to handle money powerfully. Yeah. I mean, nine out of 10 people aren't taught. So it doesn't matter if people are in business or not. Uh, you know, you've probably heard it before, but parents can't teach what they don't know. No. And unfortunately, teachers don't teach what they've never learned. No. And so most people get no financial education. All I got taught was that money doesn't grow on trees. That's all I learned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's more of an admonition is what I call it. It's sort of like saying, uh, you know, it's a parent throwing a child in a pool and then saying, OK, swim. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not an instruction. That's not no. a lesson. That's nothing. No, exactly. And fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. And the next question for me is, what impact does this inability to, to manage their, their money or finances have on either the entrepreneur or their business? Um, well, it's a lot of struggle. It's uh, uh, not generating the revenue to um, uh, meet payroll, not paying themselves first, not setting aside enough money so they can create some financial choice in their life. Uh, it's uh, mounting debts that show up. It's um, it, it just it, it's stress. It's just a pile of bad things. Yeah. And, and sometimes a downward spiral as well. Once you do get into this financial difficulty. Oh, yes, Absolutely. Yeah. And so if there is anybody out there that's listening to this and they're starting to recognize some of these messages, what's that one piece of advice that you might give to them to really help them solve this problem? Uh, one of the things that has worked over and over and over again, it's worked for 5,000 years. Mm -hmm. So it's withstood the test of time. Yeah. And there was a book written about it 100 years ago. Oh, I've got to put you on the spot. Tom, have you heard of the expression, pay yourself first? I have. Yes, I have. Okay. And can you explain it? So I guess for me, the way I look at it from an entrepreneur's perspective is, you know, you need to be able to cover your basic needs um, before you start investing the money elsewhere. Okay. Nope. Has nothing to do with that. <laughs> no. and, and so don't worry. You fit the nine out of 10. Yeah. that can't explain it, let mm -hmm. alone do it. And what it means is you set aside 10% of the money that comes into your hands. Uh, and you keep it for the rest of your life. And that's the money you use to invest. That's the money that grows and provides an income so that it's working instead of you working. I see. Yeah, makes complete sense. That's the first 10% of your monthly income, I assume, gets put into that separate account. That's and correct. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Okay. So that's great advice. And also, as well as great advice, do you have a great resource that you can share with people or something people can go and look at next in terms of taking that next step with you? Um, yeah, two things. One of them is uh, my TED Talk, where I talk about how we've been conditioned to believe it's better to be poor than to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. And the cure for that is a nine-step roadmap to complete financial choice. 
And if they go to wealthoneanyincome.com forward slash TEDx, they'll be able to see both. Great. Wealth on any income.com forward slash TEDx. And what I'll do is I'll put that link in the show notes. So again, that's going to be clickable for people listening to this podcast. Now, the next question from me is what would you say is one of your greatest either learnings or mistakes that you've made either in life or business? <laughs> and what did you learn from it? Um, the, uh, there were, <laughs> there, gosh, there's so many mistakes. Where do we start? Uh, <laughs> um, probably the the one that turned out to be the best was I started to pay myself first uh, in my 30s uh -huh. and then uh, wasn't speaking to anyone else. And so the IRS said, oh, the money that you've set aside the last 10 months, you needed to pay income taxes. Yeah. So it was all gone. I felt dejected. I didn't pay myself first again for another eight years until I reread the book, uh -huh. uh, The Richest Man in Babylon. And then uh, did that for a little while. I don't remember why I stopped. I think it was around the time of my divorce. Yeah. And by the time I was 50 and I'm doing it for the third time, it finally stuck. Yeah. And I'd saved up enough money after three years to participate in the down payment of some real estate. And within five years from that point, I went from broke to multi-millions. Great. Love it. What a great lesson. And like you said, it wasn't first time that you got that right. It was maybe no. third time, but you know, it's, the third time. The lesson is that you kept going back and, you know, eventually it, it did stick. <laughs> yeah. It took a while to stick. Yeah, it did. Great. And that's awesome. And the last question for me today is what is the one question that I should have asked you today that will also bring some great value to our audience? Um, what would I recommend for every business owner to get started doing instantly or today? Yep, I'd love to find out. What, what is that? Treat themselves like they matter. And what that means is take money from every dollar that comes in, set aside 10% of it, and begin on the road to creating wealth and financial prosperity. Great. What a great point to end on. But before we do end, I do have one last question, because in your bio, you talk about the three secrets of the wealthy. Can you mm -hmm. just read what those three secrets are for us, please. Yeah, um, there's an acronym I have. It's called AFI for the three secrets. Has nothing to do with the American Film Institute. Yeah. Um, the A stands for attitudes. The wealthy think differently than most people. Mm -hmm. uh, the F stands for forms. We've probably all used them, but the wealthy look at them differently. And the last I stands for investments, which is not limited to stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Uh, right. I have triple net leases, oil and gas, uh, there's equipment leasing, there's shelf storage, there's real estate, I mean, on and on and on. It's not stocks, bonds and mutual funds. And the best thing is you can use that 10% of the income that you've been saving up to, to start dipping into that investment opportunity. Absolutely. Great. Randy, thank you again so much for your time today. I really appreciate you coming along and sharing such great value with our audience. Oh, my pleasure, Tom. Thank you.